Hello and welcome to another video from Dazzatron's Diorama Llama. And so this video is a review of the DC Direct New Gods Big Barda, which I will come to in a moment. But first of all, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I was quite honest in my last video, which was um, the update video and pickups of 2023 this far. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to those people who reached out after that video and just to encourage me and just to say, you know, thank you for the content that I've been putting out. Um, a special thank you to Brick Something, who has been a big supporter of the channel for quite a while now. And um, again, I'd recommend you to go and look at his channel if you haven't done so already. Some really great content on there um, of all sorts of um, toys and figures that you might be interested in picking up. So again, if you haven't checked out Brick Something's um, channel, I'd encourage you to do so. So after my last video, we were fortunate enough to go on a trip to Iceland. Um, whilst I was there, I took my sketchbook, um, managed to do a few drawings while I was there, mainly testing out some new pens, uh, which were given to me by a colleague of mine. Um, these are Pigma Micron fine liner pens, and there's also a brush pen in there. I haven't used these fine liners before, but they are kind of archival, so they're not going to uh, fade in the sunlight. Um, they will last a long time. And so they're also waterproof. So I thought, yeah, these, this was a really great gift. So thank you again to my colleague Sally for, for giving those to me. And I thought I'd give those a go while I was in Iceland. So I just, yeah, just tried out some random ideas. Um, just to really put them through their paces a little bit. So trying out the different thicknesses. I don't always show my artwork on this channel, but why not? So, yeah, these are just a few of the bits that I did whilst I was away. And we had a really good time in Iceland. Um, in fact, this one here, we went on a whale kind of watching trip. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't get to see any whales or dolphins or orca whales, um, but they did kind of from the sea floor they they kind of picked up different kind of um creatures kind of sea urchins and hermit crabs and i do love hermit crabs i just think they're just really cool things so i took a photo and this was me doing a, a kind of a watercolor sketch of one of the hermit crabs who did actually bite my finger well kind of grabbed it with its uh, pinches just kind of a doodle of a cat that we saw some little watercolour studies. This is actually a bit of street art that was on one of the buildings in Iceland. Um, I can't remember the name of the places we actually visited, unfortunately. So you'd have to forgive me for that one. Um, this is one of the um, the staff, actually, where we was at. So he allowed me to do a sketch of him, which was really good. So, yeah, that was me. In Iceland I'm in a great time but unfortunately whilst we were there we heard the news that my wife's e-bike had been stolen and then a couple of days later we found out that the same people we, we suspect um, broke into our house and stole all sorts of things um, including bizarrely enough some washing powder and detergent my don't ask me why, um, maybe for a quick sale. But amongst the items that were taken was my PS Vita, um, which I've been really enjoying playing with at the moment, playing some old school games on there. My work laptop was taken. And also my iPad Pro, which is where I do all of my recording and my kind of digital artwork. And unfortunately, I hadn't backed up any of the work that I've done over the past few years, which is my fault. That's on me. And um, same with the kind of the video edits. There was a couple of half finished kind of videos that I've been meaning to get out for a while. But as I said with my last video, my kind of mental health hasn't always been hasn't been in a great place. 
said they've been put on hold for a number of months now and um, unfortunately that's all gone as well um so if you know if you get anything from this video back up your work if you do any sort of digital work and it's you know it's a rule 101 isn't it keep a backup of your work save it somewhere i just didn't expect to um lose my ipad so um so that was yeah that was not great um obviously put a bit of a downer on the holiday whilst we were away but we still tried to have a good time while we we're there we were thankful that at least you know our family was safe and i know there's lots of people worse off um, than i am so um you know we're grateful for that but it, yeah it did suck it wasn't great and um, so when i came back we had to kind of sort out all of the insurance um grateful for my wife for doing all of that and then we've had to wait for like some of the insurance pay to come through so that we can so i could pick up a new ipad and hopefully get back to some recording and to creating some more artworks so just to kind of cheer myself up when i got back while i was kind of waiting for those things to come through i thought i'd go into um the city that's kind of close to me there's birmingham city which is um, pretty close and there's also wolverhampton which is a bit closer and I do like to go into Wolverhampton because there's a couple of retro kind of or vintage toy shops there which I like to have a browse and there's also a Forbidden Planet. And so, um, yeah, I went there and had a little mooch hoping to get a bit of toy therapy and buy something new. Unfortunately, though, I, I didn't find actually any toys whilst I was there, but I did pick up a couple of books. Um, one of them is this one here, which is Doctor Strange, um, Full Sunrise by Tradmore and Hevermore. Um, as you can see, it's a large book. It's kind of a free size. Um, so it's not your normal kind of size for a graphic novel. But the artwork in here is fantastic. And I'd already seen Tradmore's artwork on the Silver Surfer. A mini series that he did a number of years ago and i was just mind blown by some of the artworks in here i'm not going to show obviously all of it for kind of copyright reasons i might just do a quick kind of flick through of some of the artworks here but just absolutely kind of stunning colorful double page spreads reminds me of the old psychedelic posters from the 1970s i don't know if you've seen any of those but if you just kind of look up psychedelic posters 1970s the kind of flyers that they did um the kind of woodstock and kind of you know different festivals and places like that it, it has this kind of style which includes the you know the kind of different kinds of lettering um and just really obviously colourful because it's psychedelic. So it had that kind of feel to it. But it's telling the story of Doctor Strange. Um, I'm not going to go into the storyline as this is not a review of this book. But I just wanted to give it a mention. So if you haven't seen it before and you do like your comic book artwork, it is definitely worth checking out. Okay, so that was one of the pickups, which was great. So I enjoyed having a look at that i did used to collect art books so i do enjoy looking at uh, people's artwork and then another book was this one here called old gods and new and it's by john morrow with john b cook and this is part of the um jack kirby collector 80 presents series so it's um yeah tomorrow's publishing and um, i think they do like a, a collector yeah there we go a collector jack kirby collector magazine and um, there's quite a few of those if you go onto their website but this is a kind of a collection celebrating jack kirby's move to dc from marvel so jack kirby if you've never heard of him don't know how you would never heard of him but he's the king of comics that's what he's known as and uh, for good reason um, his work kind of spanned, um, I think it's a few decades really, kind of the 1940s, the kind of golden age of comics. Um, and he had the silver age of comics in the kind of 
in the 60s. And so he's known for really kind of creating some of the most iconic Marvel characters along with Stan Lee. So obviously Stan Lee was the writer in many cases, but Jack Kirby, he essentially was the guy who created the visual look to some of those characters like um, Iron Man, I think it was, the Hulk, um, the X-Men, and Magneto, um, Silver Surfer, and um, Galacticus. So, you know, really, really major characters in the kind of Marvel Universe. But he's quite well known now um, that he wasn't really kind of looked after a Marvel um, he didn't always get the credit for the work that he did. He wasn't always paid as much as he could have been or got the recognition that he deserved. And um, eventually, after quite a long time, really, he left uh, Marvel and moved over to DC. He got a really good offer there. And he was able to do his own thing. Um, I don't think he was completely happy at DC, but certainly from reading this book, it gives you the story of, of what happens. But all in all, he did get to kind of create his own characters and um, he was all of his work. He, gets, he got to write it and draw it and, you know, just some amazing stuff. And actually, he was, you know... He, he was such an influential character. He was quite known as well for being quite experimental. You can see here one of his collages where he used kind of photography as well as his kind of drawn artwork. And he had a very distinct style. Um, in fact, it's quite unusual to see pencil drawings. Um, well, certainly sketches. I mean, he, he did his own pencil drawings and then often actually he was another artist that would um, ink his work um, Don Heck, I think, was one of the um, the inkers on his work. But you don't see many sketches because he, he tended to just go straight in there. He would just go for it, which is amazing, really. kind of blows my mind um, that he would do that. And in fact, just to give you a bit of an insight into just how kind of prolific this guy was and how much work he would produce, um, Kirby was known for producing about four or five pages of comic art per day and um, he'd work you know 12 to kind of 14 hours a day and uh, producing this artwork although i appreciate yeah it's got a kind of a more simplified style they are not simple drawings as you can see um they are very complex in cases you know lots of detail going on inside them um and so, you know, these aren't quick things, but he would he'd produce four to five. And just to kind of put that into context, most modern comic artists produce one comic page per day. That's pretty normal. Um, you will get some artists who produce more than that, but generally it is one page per day. And as I said, Jack Kirby, he was knocking out four to five pages, which is incredible, really. Um in fact, I think it's only, I don't know if I've got this right, John Buscema, who actually produced more um, pages, not necessarily per day, but just in his career than what Kirby did. I think Kirby was known for 18,000, just under 18,000 pages in the, you know, the span of his career, which again is incredible. So it was really nice just to look back at this kind of golden age of comics and Jack Kirby's work, and there's really nobody else like him. Um, in fact, a lot of comic art, that's probably wrong of me to say this, but there's a lot of samey comic art out there. So when you get these um, creators who produce something um, a bit different, a bit like Trad Moore with his Doctor Strange there, um, they really stand out. Mike Mignola is another one who really stands out for his kind of his art style. And so, you know, Kirby, he was the forerunner. He was the, the first person to do this. But I really love his colour work. Again, his psychedelic kind of work. I mean, just see if I can scan up here. You can just see that kind of double page watercolour. It's just amazing. Really, really incredible artworks. And 
I was just really interested in seeing that kind of journey from Marvel to DC. In particular, looking at some of his colour works here. These are some of his kind of concepts. Um, when he was kind of first talking about the new gods. As he, as he introduced them to to the, um, I suppose, the uh, the leaders, if you like, at, um, at DC. To kind of put across his, his ideas. And this is what he showed them. I'm not going to show all of these because, again, for copyright reasons, um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to. But you can see these would just make fantastic action figures. And I, I just think they're so cool. Um, I just love the costume designs. Um, love that kind of mixture of kind of old and new. So it's got a kind of futuristic kind of quality to it, but it also has a kind of a tribal take on that as well. And he was very influenced by kind of Norse mythology. And in fact, the new gods is kind of his take um, on that, really. And in fact, all sorts of mythology, Greek mythology as well. But I think in particular, Norse mythology, um, he was very interested in. And so, yeah, after kind of buying that book, I thought, oh, OK, I'll, I'll Google and see if there are any action figures of Jack Kirby's new gods. And it turns out there are, there are quite a few, but most of them are not in that kind of Jack Kirby style. Um, and the kind of two of my favourites of the the Jack Kirby's fourth world characters um, is somebody called Mr Miracle. I don't know if um, I can find him in here. And his wife, Big Barda. And I was really introduced to them through the Justice League. So in the Justice League of America, Mr Miracle was a member. I think it was in the 90s run. Um the Justice League America and I just really liked the character in fact he's just a little bit of a, a profile of Big Barda there kind of talking to Jack Kirby so these are Jack Kirby's words where he says I happen to like big girls and Big Barda was a natural type of girl for me to draw if you're digging to this a little deeper in a psychological way you'll find that short men like large women if you'll notice my wife she's maybe an inch or two taller than I am and apparently this character was based on Bridget Bardot there and also Lainey Kazan, um, who's a singer. So um, just really cool, yeah, just to look back at these and uh, these characters and remember them from my days of collecting comics. And so I looked online and it turns out there was a series of New Gods action figures in a Jack Kirby style. Um, they were sculpted by Jonathan Matthews. So if I just turn this box art around. So you can see down there, sculpted by Jonathan Matthews, who sculpted many, actually, figures for DC and um, also kind of um, sculptures as well. So not just kind of action figures. And we did one of the, again, a Mike Mignola um, sculpture because he was very good at kind of capturing that kind of stylized look um, that you get with kind of artists like Mike Mignola and in this case Jack Kirby. So part of the um, the initial wave was Dark, Dark Side, Light Ray, Mr Miracle and Orion and then with this wave you've got Calibac there, Big Barda, Superman and Metron. And I was really pleased to kind of see an interview with Jonathan Matthews online um, to see how, how he goes about creating his, his sculptures and his figures and he's a, he's a traditional kind of sculptor so he uses resin and wax so if you've ever seen anything on things like how Playmates made the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, you would see they use those old methods rather than kind of the digital methods that are often used today and so Jonathan Matthews is, is one of those guys who uses those traditional techniques. And so I'll bring in Big Barda herself. And I just think this is a really, really cool figure. Now you'll see in a moment when I come to show the articulation, you know, it, it's not up there with modern standards of articulated toys. But the sculpt on this thing is fantastic and really captures that Jack Kirby kind of more simplified style. 
So if I just bring her in a bit closer. So you can see a really, really cool sculpt there. And of course, that is the thing when you are creating an action figure, a, um, a statue. You've got to think about a 2D design, but in a 3D format, which is, you know, it's not the easiest. If you've ever, ever tried out any kind of sculpting work yourself, and I have with things like um, with Sculpey and back when I was at college, I used to create kind of animation figures. It really isn't that easy to go from a 2D artwork to a 3D artwork because there's so much more to think about. But um, I think Jonathan Matthews has done a really, really good job here. And it's just really unfortunate that some of those characters that I showed you a moment ago um, in this kind of, here we go, in some of this concept artwork. So this is the concept art for Orion that we just haven't seen action figures with you know that kind of amount of kind of detail on there in fact the closest i think we're going to get um it hasn't quite come out yet i think it's in production at the moment but there's a company called formo toys and they have created their own kind of range of characters kind of a little bit kind of masters of the universe kind of style which are legends of dragon all and one of the characters they have created is called the First Divine Armour of Power. And it's a special kind of limited edition where if you buy the whole wave, you get this character free. So it's a bit of an incentive to buy the whole wave. Unfortunately, I'd love to buy the whole wave. I just don't have the funds to do that. Um, I have got one of the characters on pre-order from a distributor in the UK. Um, but unfortunately, I've had to make a pass on this first Divine Armour of Power, but he looks amazing. And although it's not like an official Kirby character, there's a real Kirby influence there. And that's the closest that I've seen, really, besides these New Gods figures that I'm showing you now. Um, I've only got one of the New, God, the new Gods from DC Direct. There are other versions of Big Barda. There's a DC Universe Classics. And if you go online onto YouTube, you'll see lots of um, reviews of the DC Universe Classics. Unfortunately, I've only seen one other review of this DC Direct version. And if you're a Kirby fan, this definitely is the superior, if you like, sculpt. Because it really does capture the look um, that Jack Kirby, you know, gave in, in his comics. So um, I'd really encourage you to look out for these. I'm sort of going to see if I can pick up any more, a few more anyway, of those characters. Um, I might not be able to get all of them, but if I could get Mr. Miracle as well as Big Barda, that would be, that would be great. So if I just show you a little bit of the articulation I think this is early 2000s this came out. Um, I could be wrong. I've got a feeling it's about 2003, but I could be wrong on that. So you can see the articulation there. The arm only comes out that much. So there's not much kind of sideways movement there. Um, we've got kind of 90 degrees with the elbow. We've got some movement with the neck, but of course with this kind of helmet piece there you could twist it all the way around but you know i don't want to kind of damage damage this we've got the i'll just remove it from the stand actually just a little side note here i really like the addition of the jack kirby crackle that i've included on there which is um is quite famous for using this in some of his backgrounds um yeah the jack kirby crackle really cool nice little touch there so the legs can come up quite far. Again, this kind of skirt here is, is kind of restricting it a little bit there. Um, the knees don't even bend 90 degrees, almost there, but not quite. Um, there's a bit of a thigh swivel just on the top here. 
and actually quite like normally when you have a five swivel it's right up the top here um, but because of this detail in the in the leg in the costume they've kind of added it to here which is quite a nice touch so it just kind of hides it so you don't get that kind of line that you would normally get in the leg so that, that was a nice idea so it gives you a little bit of a thigh swivel there which gives you a little bit more movement um, the cape is a plastic material so you do get some give but the nice thing about that is you do get that kind of nice almost kind of wavy um, sculpt to it which you don't always get with soft goods and then we've got this um, accessory here which is the meta rod um, sorry mega rod and that is using kind of the boom tube technology so if you know anything about the new gods you've got this kind of boom tube um, technology which is um, a kind of teleportation kind of helps them teleport from one place to another so we've got that kind of weapon if you like or that accessory there so we have got some movement but you're not going to get a lot of good poses from this we've also got quite small feet there which again adds to the jack kirby look but it doesn't give you um, the ability really to create some dynamic poses but of course you do get the stand which helps and really this isn't a figure for kind of creating those dynamic poses like we can with many model action figures but it's really there um, just to admire just what a fantastic sculpt um, this is and I think it looks great I'm just going to give that a bit of a turn just so you can see it from all angles so if you don't know anything about big boulder um, I'm not going to go into kind of full details here you can give her a search on YouTube and you'll find out a bit more about this character but as I've already mentioned she's married to Mr Miracle um, she was actually on the side of dark side um, originally she was kind of born into um, I suppose the enemy's camp if you like um, her mother was a bit of a weird name big breeder and she was there simply as her name suggests to breed so dark side would use big breeder to kind of um, raise lots of children and um, the difference with big barda she was conceived naturally so we don't know who her father is i don't think it ever revealed that in the comics um but yeah as i said yeah she was conceived naturally and she was kind of raised as her own child but as i think of the other children um weren't quite seen in the same way and so she was brought up on the planet of apocalypse which is where kind of dark side resided and this was known as kind of the hell planet this was kind of the opposite um of where the new gods you know were um although you know she's still classed actually as a new god that's kind of the the race and um she was raised by somebody called granny goodness who's a fantastic character in the comics and um she kind of ran this orphanage very brutal very mean and in fact their mantra that the children would have to recite was die for dark side so um yeah quite <laughs> not the best of upbringings really but she was doing really well she was kind of spotted um because she was you know achieving so much as she was being kind of raised by granny goodness and she would kind of made lieutenant um of a team called the female furies and she was given this kind of um, the mega rod and um, yeah just a really cool character and a really strong female character as well and in fact kirby was known for saying that women were just as important as the other characters which is not always the case let's be honest um particularly in comics and um, we see more of that today um but besides characters like wonder woman um yeah they weren't always given the kind of the i suppose the equality that we we see sometimes anyway today i would still say it's not really that equal but um we, we do get more female characters than what we used to and so for the time when this uh, character was created she was a really strong powerful female lead and it was also nice as well that 
as you know Kirby already mentioned in that quote from the old gods and new book um, that he likes larger women and um, you know when we see a lot of women who are portrayed that have to be really kind of slender really thin um, sometimes even skeletal let's be honest um, it's nice to have characters who you know don't live up or are not designed in that kind of skinny kind of way and um, so yeah it's nice to see a really powerful character like this still going and uh, still making appearances in lots of the animations and other content that we see from DC so I just wanted to draw attention to this um, as you know I don't do many toy reviews but if I don't see a lot of content out there I like to add to that content and just really draw attention to some really great kind of figures that are out there um, even if they've been out there for quite a while so I'd encourage you check out the new gods check out the comic if you haven't done so already um, have another look at Jack Kirby remind yourself of the great work that he produced back in the day have a look out for these new gods figures as well and they do come up on eBay um, on the odd occasion and um, I hope you enjoyed this video so do leave a comment do like and subscribe and um, I love to hear from you it really encourages me um, I'm not one of these people who after you know a thousand likes but when we see that like button hit when we see a comment as a YouTube creator it just gives you a little bit of a buzz um, to know that people are watching and people are getting something from the content that you put in out and um, yeah I'd love to hear from you so until next time I'll see you again